Okay, in this video, we are going to look at the valuation of bonds for convertible bond. So, this is a special bond that we are going to look at today, uh, which has a special feature that uh, in that the bond can be converted into ordinary shares. Okay, so uh, before uh, we look at what is, uh, be before we look at the valuation of convertible bond, we ha you have to understand what is convertible bonds. Okay, convertible bonds as its name says, maksudnya bond ni boleh deconvert, it's being convertible. So the bond can be convertible into what? Into ordinary shares. So from bond, it can be converted into ordinary shares. So who can convert the bond? The buyer of the bond or the bond holder has the right to convert the bond. So normally, if a company sell convertible bond, uh, together with the bond, there is a right for the bond holder to convert the bond into shares. Sometimes they give uh, some condition whereby you have to hold the bond for two years or one year, then only you have the rights to convert. Sometimes you got the rights to convert the bond straight away. So basically, for convertible bond, the holders of convertible bond can exchange their bond for a specified number of shares during a given period. So one particular bond can be converted into maybe four shares or uh, 10 shares okay so that will be uh, determined prefix pre predetermined uh, by the company that sell the bond okay so normally convertible bond would carry lower interest rates than non convertible bond why is that so convertible bond ni dia punya coupon rate sebenarnya lebih rendah daripada yang normal bond ataupun yang plain vanilla bond why because convertible bond also come with the benefit that uh, the holder can convert the bond. So to offset with the benefit gain um, by the bond holder, uh, the convertible bond carry lower interest rates. But the other juga advantage lines, selain pada interest rate, rate dibagi juga rights to the bond holder to convert the bond into shares so that's why the bond carry lower interest rate so when uh, does normally uh, convertible bond ni bond holder to akan convert dia into shares it, it is usually when the common share price goes up or when the ordinary shares prices goes up so uh, for example when you buy the bond Okay, the share price is five ringgit. Okay, but after a few months, the share price goes to fifteen ringgit. Uh, that is the best time to convert uh, the bond into shares because the share has higher value. So uh, that is when you realize uh, the the increase in value of the bond. So in terms of rising share prices, untung lah kan. In terms of rising share prices, the accrued value of convertible bonds will increase. So this enable the bondholder to exercise their option to convert the bond into common shares. So they are, uh, after they convert it to into com common shares, then they will subsequently sell them at higher price in the capital market. Okay, so convertible bond earn coupon interest even when shares sell at lower price okay so maksud dia apa maksud dia lah contohnya if uh, when you buy the bonds of course you will get coupon it will give you coupon payment uh, and then uh, instead of rising the share price of the company goes down so it's not favorable to convert it into shares um, but anyway if you hold it as a bond, you will still get the coupon interest. So there is no loss to the bond holder. So anyway, they akan untung juga, they akan dapat return juga. Okay. So that is a convertible bond, the, the, the characteristic of convertible bond. So how do we value convertible bond? Okay. There are some terms that you need to know 
before we learn on how to value the bond, first is you need to know what is conversion ratio. Okay, conversion ratio ni adalah number of shares. Okay, number of shares yang you dapat kalau you convert bond to jadi share. So, kita panggil dia conversion ratio. So, macam mana nak kira conversion ratio? Dia adalah par value of bond. Ingat eh, ambil par value bukan bond price. Par value of bond divide by conversion price. Okay, usually conversion price will be given lah in the question. So, the number of shares that bondholder will receive, we call it as the conversion ratio. For example, here, Zul Hassan hold Abad Dynamics convertible bond which has a face value of 100. Okay, power value to 100. And conversion price of 20. What is the conversion ratio? Okay, so just take the face value bahagi dengan conversion price. Nah, maksudnya ialah Conversion price ni apa dia? Conversion price ni kita tengok lepas ni. So, just ambil the face value bahagian conversion price. Maksudnya, bila kita convert a bond, you will get 5 shares. It's the number of share that you get when you convert uh, the bond into shares. Okay, so that is conversion ratio, okay? Okay, next. Conversion price. Conversion price is the price that is charged to the bondholder when the bondholder were to convert the bond into shares iaitu price berapa price yang di charge kepada bondholder tu kita panggil dia conversion price so what is conversion price uh, how do we calculate it we just take the face value of bond divide by conversion ratio maksudnya kalau um, dalam ok maksudnya uh, let's look at this 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 example arena juara convertible bond has a power value of 100 with a conversion ratio of 25 shares. Maksudnya, uh, bond ni, power value dia 100. Bila convert, you will get 25 shares. So, berapa sebenarnya um, harga yang di charge untuk setiap share yang diberi tu. Okay, so that is the conversion price. So, calculate the conversion price. It is 100 divided by 25. So, 4 ringgit per share is the price charge. Which is, we call it as conversion price. Okay, so that is a uh, conversion price. Okay, we learn about conversion ratio, conversion price. Next is conversion period. Conversion period ialah tempoh di mana you are allowed to make the conversion. Okay, so it's a period of time during which bondholders are allowed to exercise their option to convert their bond into common shares. Okay, so that is conversion period. Okay. Okay, so bond has a uh, convertible bond. They are the conversion value, we call it. Apa dia conversion value? Conversion value adalah value of the bond in terms of share. Okay, value of the bond in terms of share. Kita panggil the conversion value. Maksudnya, berapa nilai bond tu setelah kita convert dia jadi share? Ha, itu maksud conversion value. Berapa nilai bond tu? Berapa duit kita dapat kalau kita convert bond tu jadi share. So we call it as conversion value. So conversion value is the market value of the underlying share that bondholders receive when their bond are converted into common shares. Okay. So berapa market value yang kita dapat bila kita convert uh, bond kita jadi share. Itu adalah conversion value. So I just ambil berapa share yang kita ada, number of share yang kita dapat lepas convert the bond, which is conversion ratio, darab dengan current market price of the share. So, price of share in the market, darab dengan conversion ratio. Okay, let's look at this example. Laser Berhad's convertible bond of 100 ringgit carries a conversion ratio of 20 shares. Okay, maksudnya bond ni kalau convert jadi share, kita akan dapat 20 share. Determine its conversion value if the market price per share is RM5.50. Okay, so we just take 20 times RM5.50 is the conversion value. Okay, so 110. So, maksudnya selepas kita convert bond ni jadi share, kalau kita jual dekat pasaran, inilah amount yang kita dapat. 
Kalau kita convert bond jadi share, kita dapat 20 share. Setiap share tu harga dia RM5.50 dekat pasaran. So, darab dengan 20 tadi dapatlah RM110. So, that is the conversion value. So, untuk setiap convertible bond, dia ada conversion value. Selain daripada, dia ada juga bond value yang macam biasa tu. So, dia ada dua value. Satu conversion value, satu lagi value of bond in terms of debt. This one is value of bond in terms of share. Okay. Okay, the next term that you need to know is conversion premium. Okay, conversion premium ni adalah beza di antara conversion value dan juga beza di antara conversion value dan bond price basically. Okay, so Uh, berapa price bond tu dijual di pasaran compare dengan berapa conversion value kalau kita convert bond tu jadi share beza dia kita panggil conversion premium lagi sekali ok beza conversion value dan bond price ialah conversion premium ok So, for example here, we have the current market price of Angkasa's convertible bond is 120. Ni bond price, okay? The, the company has set the conversion ratio as 15 shares. Currently, Angkasa share is selling at 6 ringgit. So, conversion value adalah ratio ni darab dengan uh, share price. Calculate the conversion premium. Okay, first kita calculate conversion value. Kita dapat ratio ni darab dengan bond price. Sorry, share price. Sama dengan RM90. Beza RM90 dengan bond price adalah RM30. Okay. So, yang mana satu lagi besar, dia adalah yang menolak yang lebih kecil. So, in this case, the bond price lagi besar, tolaklah dengan conversion value. Okay, dapat RM30. So, kalau bond price lagi besar, daripada conversion value bila siapa yang untung kalau jual bond ni siapa yang untung pastilah issuer yang untung sebabnya bond price lagi besar daripada the conversion value so that's why nama dia punya conversion premium ni kita panggil issuer's view sebab issuer yang untung bila conversion premium dia Uh, di mana dia punya bond price lebih besar daripada conversion value. Okay, so conversion premium ialah 30. Conversion premium adalah difference. Perbezaan antara conversion value dan uh, bond price. Tak kira lah yang mana satu lebih besar, dia adalah difference dia. Dia takkan jadi negatif. Okay, conversion premium. Tengok another one. Okay, SB Dynamic has issued a convertible bond with a face value of 100. The bond conversion value is 82. So, what is a conversion premium? Sama juga, kalau bond price tak ada, ambil je face value, tolak dengan ni, 82. So, dapat 18 conversion premium. Okay, look at this example. The board of directors of Telemax has issued 800,000 units of convertible bond. The market price of the bond is 105. The conversion ratio is 25 shares. Market price of share is 5 ringgit. So, the conversion value adalah conversion ratio darab market price. So, 125. Beza dia dengan bond price. Bond price adalah 105. So, conversion value lagi besar daripada bond price. So, ambillah conversion value. Tolak dengan bond price. Okay, dapat 20 ringgit. Beza dia. So, kalau... Uh, bond ni dibeli siapa yang untung issuer untung ke uh, buyer yang untung buyer lah untung bila buyer convert buyer dapat RM125 harga dia beli tadi RM105 je so this is from investors view so now you know how to calculate the conversion value of bond so basically the conversion of value of bond is um the value of bond in terms of shares 
And uh, while we also have learned about the value of bond in terms of the plain vanilla value of bond, um, means that the value of bond um, that we calculate the intrinsic value using the present value of all coupon payments plus the par value at the end of the maturity period. So that intrinsic value of bond based on debt compared to the value of bond based on shares um, the higher of those two is actually the minimum value of the bond. So, the the or it, or it could also be the maximum value that investors willing to pay for the bond. Okay, uh, so uh, minimum value of the bond is the higher of conversion value and the value of bonds in terms of its intrinsic value. Okay, callable bond. Callable bond is a bond that has a call feature. means that the issuer of the bond have the rights to call back the bond or redeem back the bond at any time that they like after the issuance of the bond. So, uh, for callable bond, the rights were given to the issuer of the bond. And uh, usually, um, the issuer will call back a bond that is callable when the market interest rate falls drastically so means that when the market interest rate is low the issuer can uh, issue a new bond with a lower interest rate or lower coupon rate which is cheaper for the issuer so that is when the call the bond will be called back and a new bond will be issued at a lower coupon rate Okay, so basically that is the case for a callable bond that is uh, not convertible. But uh, if a bond is convertible bond, okay, uh, a callable bond feature for convertible bond will give the rights for the issuer to force redemption or to force conversion okay, uh, before the maturity since a convertible bond can be converted into shares so uh, forced can conversion can be made by the issuer so when a convertible bond is being called investor may uh, either re uh, let the bond be redeemed and receive principal and he will receive the principal and the call penalty or the investor also could convert and receive stock that is valued at the current market value. So when a convertible bond is being called, investors have two choices. Either let the bond be redeemed, being called back, or quickly convert the bond into shares. So usually for convertible bond that is callable, if the issuer wanted to force conversion, okay, they will... Um, call the bond at a time whereby it is more favorable for the investors to convert the bond into shares at, rather than letting um, the bond being called back or being redeemed back by the issuer. So why do a bond issuer want to force conversion? Means that why do they want this uh, bondholder to convert their bond into shares. It is because um, for some companies or for some bond issuer, okay, they would like the bond to become shares. So when it becomes shares, they don't have the responsibility to pay the coupon every year anymore. So that is um, one of the reasons why they would like the bond to be converted into shares so if they have uh, the rights to call back they will call back at uh, uh, in a condition whereby it is not favorable for the bond holder to let the bond being called instead they would convert it into ordinary shares usually when the share price is high um, compared to the value that a uh, bond is being called so issuer will call the bond. Um, there's two reasons. First, if they could force conversion. So if they 
the investor choose to convert or uh, it could also be when the current market interest rate is lower than the coupon okay so uh, means that uh, they can issue a, a new bond that is cheaper uh, after they redeem back the bond okay so that is um, about callable convertible bond Okay, for bond, there are a few risks that you need to know related to bond. The first one is interest rate risk. So what is interest rate risk? It is the risk that investment's value will change due to a change in absolute level of interest rate, okay, the level of interest rate in the market. So in the spread between two rates in the shape of yield curve and in any other interest rate relationship. So such changes usually affect securities inversely and can be reduced by diversifying um, like investing in fixed income securities with different duration or hedging. Okay, so um, interest rate risk is the risk that overall market interest rate might uh, be lower so uh, or higher. So means that... Um, it is risk for both uh, investors and also the issuers to consider. So next is price volatility risk. Um, price volatility risk is the risk that the holder of a bond is exposed to the base on the potential of the volatility of the price. So um, Price volatility risk means that the price of bond could be volatile, it could go up and go down uh, depending on the demand and supply for the bond. So the more volatile uh, the price of bond is, the higher the risk. Okay, uh, and next is liquidity risk. Liquidity risk is the risk that the bondholder will will not be able to easily find a buyer for the bond if he need to sell the bond. So a sign of liquidity uh, risk is that um, the general level of trading activity. A bond that is traded frequently uh, becomes more liquid and those that is not traded frequently have higher liquidity risk. So it is less liquid for the bond holder okay, to um, cash out their investment is that it's hard to sell it's higher liquidity risk for credit risk credit risk is a risk that uh, the bondholder might not be able to pay the coupon or the principal uh, so that is what we call as credit risk uh, the possibility that a bond issuer will be in default if they fail to pay the principal and interest in a timely manner or maybe fail to repay the principal and interest at all. So that is the credit risk. So this credit risk depends a lot on the financial stability or cash flow of the bond issue. And the last one is the call risk. Call risk is the risk that the bond can be called back. This is particularly for bond that is callable bond. So if you invest in a callable bond, means that you are exposed to a call risk whereby the bond can be called at any time. So uh, it is actually related to the cash flow risk resulting from the possibility that a callable bond will be redeemed before maturity. Means that if the bond being called, if the bond is being called, then you will you as the investor will have a cash flow. A risk in which you will not get the coupon in the future anymore when the bond is being called because um, you will receive the principal uh, value of the bond plus the uh, the call penalty that is being paid to you so with that uh, amount of money you have, you have to reinvest back somewhere uh, that might be giving you a lower in interest rate it could possibly uh, give you lower interest rate so that is uh, the reinvestment risk that you will be facing so callable bond can be called by company that issue them means that bond that uh, can be redeemed by the bondholder and usually um, this bondholder will issue a new bond at lower interest rate if you are interested with the new new bond you can reinvest back in the company uh, if not you will have to find some other place 
to invest your money. Um, so that is the call risk.